the new no-code tutorial for no-code HQ. And today's tutorial, we're gonna take a quick look at parameters in your bubble application. So this will be a quite a short tutorial, um, but really helpful if you have a bubble application and you wanna um, take things or functionality a bit further by using page parameters, okay? So what I did here, I just created a new bubble application and um, this is the application system. I'm just gonna click start with a blank page, okay? And for this tutorial, actually, let me scroll down here a bit so you can see um, the URL um, of the page we are at currently, because this is what we're going to need um, for our for this tutorial as parameters are displayed um, in the URL. Okay. Before I'm going to begin anything, let me just explain maybe a bit what parameters are. So you have a URL. So let's say um, your URL. Okay www.url.com okay and what we usually have is you have parameters and the first parameter you have begins with a question mark and then we all always have a key and a value so for example you can have name equals test okay and if you want to add another uh, parameter you can use the and sign and then have the second key and value so for example uh, place equals berlin and um time equals today and so on and so forth you can add as many parameters as you like and these parameters basically serve um, as a way of transferring information within the url okay and i'm going to show you how um or basically how to use this in your bubble application okay so let's start up with a simple thing we have here uh, our main page and i'm going to just have a title here which is going to say sign up for free okay let's say this is your main starting landing page, whatever you want to call it, but you also have a separate sign up page. So let's quickly create that page. So add a new page called that sign up. Okay. Uh, clone that from the index page. And now we have um, a second page, which is called sign up. And let's just have, change the title here, sign up. Let's have two inputs here, obviously. So input one will be our email. So enter email and we'll also have an enter password field. Okay, enter password, and then we have a button, sign up, okay? Now what we wanna have, what we wanna have on an index page, like many websites actually do, we wanna have an input, um, which just says, enter your email, okay? And then maybe a button next to it, I don't know, like, like, like this here, we can have that next to it, and we can actually group them together and center this group, okay? And this button is um, a test for seven days or seven days sign up for free or something like that. It doesn't matter now, but m many websites they have on their landing page this kind of call to action, okay? With just the email input and a sign up for free um, button, which will then actually lead to our sign up page where users can then sign up and create an account, okay? Another important thing is we want a user obviously to get to the sign up page when he or she clicks on sign up, but we also want to send over whatever he or she input in this value here in this input, enter your email over to the sign up page. So if I enter my email here and click on sign up for free and I land on the sign up page and I have to enter my email again, well, then what was the point of entering it in the first place? That's really bad user experience. So we kind of want to transfer this data from one page to another. And the best way to do this is actually using URL parameters. So I'm gonna go back to the index page here and it's actually gonna be really simple. What we're gonna do, we're gonna click here, okay? Sign up for free. When this is pressed, we wanna navigate. So go to page, sign up, okay? And now there's various things we could do. We could send over some data and the data that we can send over here will actually also be seen as a parameter. Only difference is this will have to be a, a thing in your bubble application. Okay, we're going to take a look at that in a second. But we actually want to send more parameters to the page. So we want to define what parameters we send. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to add a parameter. And now you can have a key and a value. Okay, the same as I showed you before. And you can basically define whatever the key is that doesn't actually matter but maybe use something that makes sense for you as well so i'm just going to call that email we want to send over an email when we go to the page sign up as a parameter and the value of this key will be whatever our input enter your emails value is okay so let's just quickly test that really fast so 
as you can see, I'm previewing the Bubble application here. That's the URL. You can already see there's a parameter always here uh, appended by Bubble, which is just the debug mode. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to enter an email. Okay. So test whatever. Okay. And I'm going to click sign up for free. So let's take a look at what happens. We are brought to the sign up page. Looks great. And if we take a look at our URL here, we have all the default stuff and the email equals test percentage 40 test.com. So the email field is sent as a value within the URL. Okay. And this percentage 40, don't worry. That's just the URL way of kind of showing an ad sign. Okay. Now the last part is we want to take this data from here and put that into here as a default value. How are we going to do that? Really, really simple. Let's go back and under sign up, I'm going to say, okay, look under enter email, we have initial content and you could either have, have hard coded kind of content should always be this, or you can have dynamic data. And what you can always do in bubble, which is really great. You can scroll down and you can get data from the page URL and it asks you what, what data you want to get? You want to get some parameter data. What is the name of this parameter? Well, we call it email. So that's the name of the parameter. And what's the type of the parameter? You could either have text, number, dates, and of course also things. So which will be things in your bubble database. However, um, we can um, just leave it at text because that's what it is. Okay, great. So let's just try that again. I'm going to preview the index page again. And let's preview the index page. So let me just again enter um, a test email here. Test at test. Okay, and let's sign up for free. And now what should happen? Amazing. Somehow this or not somehow, but this email is automatically appended here. And as a user, we can just enter the password here, sign up, and we don't have to repeat or re-enter the email again. And that's basically it. Really, really simple. Okay. And another thing we can do. Um, which I want to show you is you can send over things. Okay. Um, so for example, let's, let's, let's just create another page here and I'm going to call this profile or just maybe user. Okay. And okay. We can call it user, user profile. Let's call it user profile. All right. And what I'm going to show you here is that you can not only uh, send basically values, but also database things. Okay. So let's just quickly create a new user in a database. Okay. Let's actually create, um, for each user, he or she should have a username. Okay. So which is of type text, I'm going to go to app data and for all users, I'm going to create a new entry, just the email here, info at nocohq.com and the username is just test. All right. And now what I want to do, I want to say, all right, um, this year, the text here on the user profile should display hello. And then let's try it. Get data from page URL parameter type user. Okay. The parameter name will also be user and we want to display the username. Okay. So we're going to fetch data from this URL to define which user is currently active. Okay. Um, by using the user parameter of type user and then displaying his or her username and then maybe an exclamation mark. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go to index page. I'm just going to go here to the button and this button will say, I don't know, go to profile. Okay. And when this is pressed, now let's uh, take a look at that. So again, we want to navigate to the page user profile and want to send parameters to this page or actually want to send some data here or actually let's send you more parameters to the page. We want to add a parameter. The key will be user and this will be the current user. Okay. So let's, let's just log in here as this user. Okay. And let's quickly preview that. So go to profile. Awesome. As you can see, it says hello test. Why does it say hello test? Well, our username is test. As you can see, the unique ID of our user account is appended to this URL. And therefore this data is displayed. If I just remove this here, okay, and refresh the page, it just says hello because it doesn't find any user here. If I ju just append the unique ID again, refresh the page, it says again, or it should say again, hello, you test. Okay. If I go into the database and I change the username to um, no code HQ, for example, and just refresh the page or it's actually automatically says hello no code hq
okay so you can also th send things and these can be all kinds of things within your bubble database all right that's basically it i wanted to keep this tutorial short um, more advanced tutorials will follow but that should be a good introduction into uh, parameters url parameters in your bubble application um, yeah i hope you learned something and i'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of no